I'm Cody Swanson. I'm Tanner Swanson. I'm Georgia Adeline, and this is The Skinny. From Fathead Studios in Speedway, Indiana, this is The Skinny. It's time to have some fun once again here on The Skinny. We've got a loaded panel and a new co-host along the way, Ken Stout, Rico here. We welcome Georgia Adeline to a co-host position here on The Skinny, and then two of the best to ever climb behind the wheel of an open-wheel car. For starters, let's kick it off with Cody Swanson, the five-time USAC Silver Crown champ, three-time Little 500 winner, also a Western States Sprint champ, and then his brother sitting alongside, that is Tanner Swanson, and of course he just broke the record here at Carb Night just a couple of nights ago, a six-time winner now, broke a three-way tie between himself, his brother, and Mike Bliss, also a Western States Sprint champ, but I'm going to kick the show off properly. I'm going to ask the first question to the Swanson brothers because it's an important one. Which one of you guys is the favorite? Because there's always a favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Come on now. Let's go. (laughs) Cody's everybody's favorite, right? You know, uh, it's not uh, not that close of a competition. I... I, uh, I don't do uh, do very well for myself, you know, uh, I guess uh, trying to put myself at the top of that heap. <laughs> you okay with that one, Cody? I'll take it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, congratulations on a very successful weekend for, for both of you guys. Uh, I know also Lucas Oil Raceway Park, of course, out there and at the fairgrounds, and things didn't end that as well as you'd like them to at the fairgrounds. But, boy, uh, qualifying on the pole for, for three of those races, you won your first um, – USF 2000 race, so that, that had to be uh, fun. And then, uh, Tanner, for you to go out there and, and break that record. And By the way, Mike Bowman is my neighbor with a drinking problem. He lives about <laughs> four doors down. Yep, yep. And, and uh, uh, really, really good friend, so I was really happy to, to see you guys have that success once again. So, But what an amazing weekend for you guys. And I think you started off – did you start off two races side by side or just one? Just uh, one. Yeah, just one. Just one. So. Yeah, so it uh no, it was it was a great weekend for us and um you know to be to be on the front row or on the pole that many times was was really good for qualifying, but unfortunately the races didn't all work out uh to finish all the way up front like that. But um it um it's something I know that when Tanner comes to town, um you definitely have to step up your game if you're gonna keep up there at, at Lucas Oil Raceway. So I'm um, glad to to have had a good weekend for the two of us. And something that I noticed, especially right off the bat at the uh, at Carb Night, Carb Night Classic, Tanner, you got the w- the win there, and you were physically upset after the race because you did not get to race your brother. Kind of tell us about that. You could tell the, the emotion in your interview. Obviously, you were happy, but the, you were you were a little bit mad there that you didn't get to race your brother. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I guess uh, I guess there's two sides of it. It's kind of nice because uh, I guess I get to keep bragging rights here for the next uh, I don't know probably nine to twelve months before I get in a race car again so that's nice but on the flip side you know there's 13 months of of waiting that he had bragging rights and you know you you focus on that and and you want to try your best when when you do get a chance and felt like uh, we might have had a chance who knows we you know never never really got to duel it out so spent a long time looking forward to it and and didn't really get to take advantage of of having fun with it so a um, little disappointed, but uh, hey, a win's a win, and, and we'll take them. They're, they're hard to come by no matter how you get them. So when you guys are petted, uh, where were you guys petted at? Because I know that your dad's there. <laughs> so where does he split the time? How, is that where the favoritism comes in? Is that what we were talking about? <laughs> I was just asking the question. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. There might not be one. I just thought they would know. You're the always down at Cody's pit. <laughs> He's wherever yeah. the grandkids are. Yeah. 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 That's right. Now, now should we talk about the grandkids? And we, we each yeah. have uh, two kids uh, of our own, so it's hard to hard to you know split it up that way. Uh, it, it's been uh, really special between grandma and grandpa, you know, I guess in, getting to enjoy that grandparenting role. So um no for the silver crown series we usually aren't pitted to e- next to each other yeah. um uh since tanner's been running for the bowman team and, and at that point in time i was running for the De Palma family and have since um since they retired been running for gene nolan's team uh now his son greg's taken over um we don't our silver crown programs are completely separate so um when when dad's been in town lately and mom too they, they just enjoy being parents so They'll come in and, and check on us uh, a little bit and see how it's going, but but almost just as uh, just as parents checking in and see how their kids are doing more than um, really being involved with the racing program. So I think um, I think they they enjoy that part of it and getting to enjoy the races. You know, there was a period of time that um, when I was driving for the De Palma family, my dad was was helping me on the team. Um, that was when I was running for a title, and and Tanner and the Bowman team got hooked up uh, a little bit after that, and. 
um, for about two or three years, Tanner was just beating us all the time. <laughs> and, and I, and I felt so bad because, you know, my dad's trying you know, his best to help me. And was he, re- uh, was he really though? Uh, yeah. I, I, he I, really, I, really, I really believe he was because Tanner's you know, slipping him a hundred yeah, bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keep it up, dad. Yeah, he's <laughs> an easy buy. Cody didn't know. But, you know. <laughs> no, but, I mean, you, see, I, you feel bad because, um, you know, on one hand, his, his son lapped almost everybody in the whole field. And, and he's, you know, with me and feeling the, the de- dejection of losing. Of losing. And, and, and <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not really f- fair for him. So uh, I'm, I'm glad we're in the spot we are now that we both uh, go get to go out and, and try our best for it and, and that our, our parents get to enjoy it. They put a lot into um, getting us to this point, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they're able to come out and enjoy the races with us. Yeah, there comes a time, you know, as parents where you can step back your your sons or daughters, you know, their program is successful, and you realize, hey, I'm not bringing any more to the table here. Might even hurt it a little bit. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Obviously, the success is is there. And uh, by the way, congrats, first person with 30 poles and 30 wins in Silver Crown. That's a huge number on on both ends. Pretty cool. But I would think for your dad, you know, he just looks at you guys and says, both of those both of those kids are phenomenal drivers. They're in great programs. I'm going to sit here and, and watch. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. Um he, my dad is really talented uh, in racing and um, had a lot of success driving himself. Oh, say a modified uh, driver, right? The West yeah, Coast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean he ran he ran super modifieds, limited modifieds, one in late models, one in the, the Grand American or IMCA style, um, and he didn't retire from driving until I turned 16. And um, the way he did it was you know, he was driving for uh, a friend, uh, Keith Williams, the dentist uh, out on the West Coast there. And in the last year he ran, it was kind of one of those things where if, if it could hold the ride open until I turned 16 and could take over. So um, y- you can't have a more uh, selfless e- example of, of what a father will do for, for us. And, and both my parents have, have been that way all along to do anything they could to, to help get us a chance to move forward and, and teach us how to work hard and to try to um, make those opportunities ourselves. So um, he would definitely be an asset to, to any racing program still, but fortunate, you know, with all he's got on the West Coast and, and still trying to run, uh, uh, you know, our family farming operation, um, it, it was a lot of stress on him to be able to come back and forth and, and to try to be focused on racing, you know, only getting to do it limited times a year. So um, I'm glad for the spot they're in that they can um, that they can come and enjoy it. But um, definitely, uh, racing definitely hasn't passed them by. If he if he wanted to be involved, he's he's definitely sharp enough to understand it. Growing up, is that what you guys did? Did you go to those late model races? You were going to those modified races. Were you helping him? How did you guys even get your start, you know, going to the races and actually driving yourselves? Yeah, so so we grew up um, going, and, and when we were younger, was, he was racing super modifieds up and down the West Coast, traveling quite a bit, racing against Billy Vukovic and Davey Hamilton and those guys. And uh, once once i kind of got in the picture once i was two or three he kind of stopped doing that uh, started racing late models uh close to home traveling a little bit but mainly at madera um, so most of our racing memories were growing up watching at madera um, and if you sit in the grandstands at madera you can see there's a quarter midget track off the back straightaway and you can see the roll cages uh just as they go by and so uh you know i'm i guess persistent to a fault um, as Cody would probably say, uh, <laughs> with, with my parents. Um, and so we, we both hounded them for years and years. And uh, for safety reasons, Dad wouldn't let us run a quarter midget. He didn't like the habits that you would learn leaning out of the car. And so they had a list of, of things that we needed to, uh, to meet in order to drive race cars. Um, and we used to ride quads at, at the beach uh, on our Christmas vacations um there in california and we were getting ready for christmas and went to a quad shop uh it's the steve hamlin's you know shop there in hanford and uh found a junior sprint that met all dad's qualifications (laughs) and uh, and i hounded him until he let us get in one so um yeah that's kind of how we got our start we didn't get started cody was 12 and and i was eight oh wow um i sat well i guess i was nine when i was eight i sat in one and and they started it and i kept shutting it off i was terrified didn't want to do it um and so uh so we came back a year later yeah. and uh, I, I finally was ready to go but uh, i mean that yeah, yeah that was kind of and tanner talked about being persistent that <laughs> by the time it actually got all wound up to go they thought i didn't want to do it and it's like i still want to do it i was just nice enough to you know hear no 50 times and think that was it you know and um Dan talked about the qualifications. You know, we didn't run go karts because my dad had crew guys that had been hurt without the roll cage, and and when he come across that junior sprint, and had a five point harness and a roll cage and things like that, we were able to get started. And that first year, we didn't we didn't race. We um we would go to the track every Friday and help other kids. 
that was dad's thing is he, we weren't going to get started in this unless we were in it and it wasn't going to be a whim. And he always would say it wasn't going to be his hobby. So, um, we worked on the cars with him and, and we worked on other kids' cars for a year before, um, we were able to get one and, and split time, like we said. So then that night that, um, that Tanner decided he wasn't going to do it, he was in the shoot. Well, I had put my seat in the back of uh, grandma's Durango <laughs> and run down from the grandstands and I thought, I, I'm in now. So I got to have one extra race that fall when we, uh, when we got started, but, um, so this is 2000? Uh, that would have been the end of 1999. 1999. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, you know, that's a lot of, uh, that says a lot about your parents and your dad. I mean, I've known your dad uh, as, as you guys for a long time and, and uh, you know, didn't know anything about you guys when I first met. Of course, I met Cody first, you know, up at the 6R deal and all that. And uh and uh, that that speaks volumes of what you guys do now. And uh, because, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that just throw their kids in cars. And the the quarter midget thing, what Tanner was <laughs> talking about, man, I still don't get that. <laughs> I mean, you're hey kid, get in there and hang your head out of the cage. And I mean, yeah. I don't care how fast you're going. That's just a bad idea. Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, and it is. It's it's teaching bad habits and. Uh, and it's not realistic, right? I mean, you don't hang your head out of a sprint car, out of a silver crown, you know, anything. Not on purpose, anyway. No. <laughs> yes. yeah. There was a lot I of there not. was there was a lot of times that I had seen, it, you know, I definitely saw that happen. But uh, but yeah, so that's that's cool. That's that's awesome. It yeah. looks like the system paid off. If I'm not mistaken, you won your first <laughs> ever USAC sprint car race at Anderson, correct? Yeah, yeah. That that was a lot of it, and I'm sure Cody can attest to it too. Was growing up, the the motto that I always remember was, "This is not my hobby." And so the first year that we ran, I mean, we were 2004 uh, in a sprint car. No, so and we started in junior sprints 2000. We were. Uh, oh, I terrible. said in a sprint car, yeah, in a sprint yeah. Car, but I know you started, yeah, you yeah. So, so that. that you know, we were bad, and we ran seventh and eighth every night, and Dad was fine with it. Um, and then it was us that, that finally had to put in the time, you know, during the week to get better. And and so, yeah, by the time we got to sprint cars, we were uh, we were lucky. I won my first start, uh, my first national start um, in like 2008. Cody, I think, mm -hmm. won his second or third start um, on the Western States back in 05. Um, and so, yeah, we were fortunate to have success early. Well, rumor has it that some guy named Clay Klepper was your hero. <laughs> he was. He was. We, wow. Uh, wow. We... I'll just stop right there. <laughs> Not Rob. Clay. I know. <laughs> we, we grew up uh, watching Thursday Night Thunder. Um, and you know what? My favorite color was orange. And my favorite number was 17. And, and uh, he drove that seven, you know, that, that uh, silver 17 with orange numbers on it and was from Carruthers, which is 20 minutes from where we grew up. And, uh, and so, yeah, I was, I was a big fan, uh, for just those reasons alone. And it's, it's funny cause it's gone full circle there. Uh, you know, Rob and Clay are second cousins of yeah, my yeah, wife. You, you married so, his cousin, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're related. So I, I don't know. Great, great job on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, they're, they're good cats. And, uh, I work, I work a lot with Rob. He did throw. A, he threw me a stat. He said, "Run this one past him." He thought it was still correct, but nine times you guys have finished one, two at the Silver Crown race at Lucas Oil Raceway. I mean, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, no, we've you know we've been lucky. Um, and I think I've always said you know it's just awesome to be able to race at the level that we are, let alone getting to do it you know with your brother. Um, we shared a room for I don't know 15 years growing up, mm -hmm. and so it's. Uh, it's just fun to, to be able to be fortunate enough to be doing that. When that weekend comes up, how do you prepare? I mean, you're only racing once once a year now that they added the night before the 500, you know, twice a year, kind of that. I would say that Cody would give you pointers, but <laughs> I don't really think that <laughs> that you case. can give him pointers. Yeah. No, no, there's um, – that's, that's kind of somebody was talking about. You know, I was racing for one of the teams this week that, that Cody's raced for in the past, and – they'd made a comment about me and Cody not really trading notes at all. And it said, you know, it's not fair for the teams that we race for, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're paying us to do the same job. So, um, Cody obviously has a lot more extensive notes, but, uh, I still try my best to, to give them, uh, you know, a fair shake when it comes to racing, uh, that one time a year and, um, really start, start kind of preparing a month before and, and trying to get things figured out. But, uh, for whatever reason, we've been, lucky to have success uh, the times I've been able to come back. 
Yeah, I mean, don't let him fool you as far as the notes goes. I mean, we'll be five laps into practice, and he's top of the board. So um, it's not – and that's something You're like, that, come on. Yeah, I mean, sibling rivalry-wise has bugged me since the beginning, right? As, right. as I spend all the time, and I'm really trying to, to work at it and figure out where I need to be a little bit better. And um, he's had uh, an uncanny ability of being able to hop in and within three laps be there. Be the limit, be past it, save it, and be right back to it and – um, will just continue to beat you unless you figure out how to get better. So uh, I mentioned there was some some time there as, uh, you know, we, we were teammates with Team 6R for a little while, and that was the first time we got to run 1-2. So it was really neat to do that as teammates. And then everything since has been completely separate, um, enough to where we don't know what each other's stagger is, what springs are, different, you know, shock brands at times, um, just going out and, and racing. But like you said, I mean, we, we grew up sharing a room. Um, we raced together in micro sprints and, and part of our family team at that level um, to where there was a lot of years we did we did talk, you know, and learn uh, about each other's uh, tendencies and how to be better. And um, I'm going to say, you know, what I think Tanner turned 16, I got kicked out of the family car. We, I mean, we only had enough uh, ability to, to put one together, and I'd had two years, and it was either time to sink or swim, either find out how to get your own ride or, or that's it, you know, and it was Tanner's turn. And um, after doing that a little bit, we got the chance in, in 2009 and had had um, David Rich was a sponsor and a friend that came alongside. We have two cars. And that year we raced together on the West Coast. I think, I think out of the ten races we finished one, two, seven times. And it was the same thing. Whoever got the lead first um, – seemed to win. It was it's so hard to, to pass for the lead, let alone to pass your brother and, and to do it in the right way. And, um, it, it was, I felt like we both grew a lot in that year because before then you know, I was probably, um, uh, a little bit more reserved at the beginning, but would have good tires at the end and, and becoming strong at the end. But Tanner was so quick at getting through traffic right away and taking advantage of every hole and opportunity. He get to the lead, no matter how fast it was at the end, I couldn't get to him. So that was something that, that forced me to learn how to be quicker and more aggressive at times at the beginning. And same thing with him, maybe save his tires a little bit better uh, to, to race each other. And, and as time's gone on, I think that's made us both better racers as, um, as we compete against each other and everyone else in the Silver Crown Series. Tanner, those things are, uh, are fairly difficult to drive physically. I mean, you're, it's a big car, and you're going 100 laps. It's not a 40-lap lap feature. With only being in the car once a year, do you find yourself getting tired now? Yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it's definitely a lot different. I, I don't know necessarily about as much of getting tired as trying to fit my suit is a little bit tougher. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, this was probably the first year that uh, – last year was probably the first year that I really felt like I left something on the table. And this year, you know, I spent the last three weeks, I lost 15 pounds and, and was spending a bunch of time on the exercise bike every night. And, and you know, I'm always a procrastinator, so I guess I was trying to make the most of it late there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it takes a little bit to get used to. I, I definitely noticed the next morning, you know, there's there's just muscles that are sore that, that you don't use any other time. And you were racing um, the next night as well. So yeah. you, were you a little sore going into Saturday night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a little bit of Advil going on. So, um, you know, every year that, that kind of gets a, a little bit tougher, but uh, just keep trying to learn from it and, uh, and getting better at that. Um, by the way, uh, to Cody, um, I was not familiar with Legacy Autosport, but owned by Mike Meyer, whose great-grandfather, Lewis, was the first person, I believe, to win the 500 three consecutive times, and you got them their first win uh, and he, and, on, and, on Friday night. That's and one more thing amazing. about that, the milk. The milk. His, his, his grandfather, or his great-grandfather, is the one that started the milk Is that tradition. right? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's for sure. really cool. And, and I think that's, you know, um, Mike and then his father, Butch, you know, um, have, have both been in, in IndyCar, you know, uh, for so, so many years and had played their own roles in the sport and um, both had a lot of success uh, through, throughout all sorts of uh, divisions. Because Mike IndyCar was with life. Bellardi for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what and, I... and Bellardi and, um, and Sam Schmidt. And yeah. I know that um, he won the Freedom 100, you know, as, as a mechanic for four or five times as a yeah. chief mechanic. And, yeah. and um, you know, Butch was, uh, was a part of Team Menard um, when Tony Stewart came to IndyCar. Uh, and it would have been 96 probably. Yeah, was he a tech guy after that? Is that what I understood? He, he worked for IndyCar he, after that, He right? was, yeah. And, yeah. and he worked for, uh, for Indy Lights as they developed that program and, and was even one of the head officials that um, oversaw incoming drivers and, and the initial drivers testing. Um, and so as they 
had an opportunity to start their own team. That's where they, they carry the legacy name it is, you know, from, from their great grandfather and their family history in the sport. And um, I think they, they started in the end of 2018 um, with a, a USF program uh, and ran last year full time um, and, and continue with the USF program. And, and over the past winter had, had bought a, a Indy Pro 2000 car. Um, so that was uh, that was something they were they were working on trying to get ready. And as, as all this year has has unfolded so funny, um, got a chance to get the car on the track uh, one time. And that was uh, with me there at um, Lacrosse Fairgrounds in Wisconsin to, to get me a little rear engine experience. And um, I'm you know, really thankful that they they stuck their neck out to get me a chance like that. And as things had, had kind of developed, um, got a chance to you know look into the these uh, these races, you know, with with Carb Night coming up uh, at Lucas Oil Raceway and. Um, Rico and Fatheads Eyewear stepping on board to, to support us and help make that happen. Um, got a chance. That, that was their first race in, in the series and, and mine too. And so it was really special to, to help be part of that, to help get them their first win in the Road to Indy series. By the way, I want to clear something up. I said consecutive first, uh, three time consecutive first, three time winner is what he was. So there's some, there's some wicked stat guys out there. So I don't, I don't want them sending me. That'd have been the end of it right there. For Christmas, you know. I'd have been crucified for sure. But yeah, no, that's it. It was quite, quite an accomplishment to get in that. Did you, do you have the poor seat for that car? Um, Probably should have, but there was one that they found that fit <laughs> close enough. Close yeah, and, well, let's save you twenty five hundred. So and we, we put some padding in there, and and you know it, it's one of those things that you sit in it. And yeah, I feel fine. And then after you get to driving a little bit, you're like, oh, this thing transfers weight and, and load different. So, I mean, we were shoving padding, you know, up up until we started the race. Like I think I could use a little more in this shoulder, and I didn't want to make you know. Last thing I wanted to do was uh, was to wear out before it was over, but um, everything was fit me really good by the time uh, time we got ready to go and and uh, and it worked out. By the time we um, by the time or before we went on the air here, um, you had mentioned that you had Dwayne Elwanger spotting for you. He's a good friend of mine as well. Um, but I I do know that your wife also spots for you. So is it the first time in a long time you've had somebody else in your ear? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I've been fortunate to try a few new things this year. And, um, you know, one of them, we, we got to got to start uh, in an ARCA series stock car um, at Iowa Speedway um, for Chad Bryant Racing. And at the same time, um, Jordan has spotted for me, and she does an amazing job. She's I think she's really first class with, Good answer. with the job she does, <laughs> right? right? Um, I, I, uh, I, I really believe that. And, and there are people who have heard her spot for me that would back me up. I'm not just uh, no, saying no. the correct answer. I'm, I'm telling well, the truth. Well, it shows. So, um, in the results. Right. Yes. right. Yeah. And, you know, but at that point, what, what we do and work together, you know, for Silver Crown races, I have enough experience that I know what I need to hear. Um, trying these new things, it's, it's such an unknown to me that – um, I, I really, I, to put it weird or oddly, is that I don't know what I don't know yet. And so it's, it's important for me to have a spotter that, that knows the ropes, that, that knows what to expect out of these types of cars in these series. And, and that definitely helps, you know, give me a little, um, little measure of comfort, you know, knowing that uh, the person up there it has the experience that I don't have. Yeah, and for the fans uh, that don't know Dwayne, which I don't know if anybody that doesn't know Dwayne, just ask Dwayne, but... He, uh, he's, he's a great guy. Correct. He's a great guy, but he's he's, he's a spotter guy. for Alex Rossi, so he's he's a seasoned vet. Yeah, and and um, he was he was great to have um, in my ear that that whole day, and, and even the practice day leading up to it. Just um, everything from from being comfortable getting on and off pit road, and knowing uh, where the other cars are at, and and what gaps I would have to to try things and, and try to build comfort in. I mean, at this point, I don't I don't really even know how to drive the car yet, and um, it was nice to know when I had the space to try to help help myself teach myself or, or learn what to expect out of the race car. Were you ever comfortable? Were you ever 100% comfortable, even 90% comfortable in that car with so little experience? I mean, you got you got the win. You, you did what you needed to do, but were you comfortable? I mean, I, I felt like I, I started to get comfortable throughout the race. Um, you know, leading up to, to Thursday, I mean, we had a, a few different practice sessions and trying to figure out the race car and, and – how to gain enough speed you know we started out i think we were about ninth in the order and trying to figure out what was missing and, and what was what was missing from the car and what was just missing from me you know it's one of the things in, in any type of new car is corner entry and and is it that that's how they're supposed to feel and i just need to adapt to that or is there something we need to do to make the car better well you were but, missing about 500 horsepower uh yeah we, we were a little <laughs> short from what we used to and and sitting kind of funny and there was a whole bunch of stuff going on there right <laughs> trying to adapt to that 
Um, thank, and, thank God you run that V6 Sprint car. Oh, at least yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. At least some, the sound is a little bit. Some yeah. reference point. Yeah. 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 That, so. That's that's funny. I mean, the, the conversation he and I had last night, I, I hadn't talked to him since really, you know, he won. Uh, and... Uh, myself, Caitlin, and Gary Woodruff were setting, we were standing down, or we were on the hill and won, and I was watching him coming in, and something he said to me right before, you know, right before he went out there was, or I was taking him back to the paddock from the, from the Silver Crown uh, pits, and something he said, he goes, man, I just got to get used to pitching the car in, you know, and, and die, you know, diving it in there, and so, of course, I'm sitting there watching, and I'm watching other guys do it, but I watched him. Was it lap two? One, mm. lap, lap two. two. Lap two. It was almost completely over. I mean, it was. <laughs> yeah. it, it, no. I, oh no, no, it was. Uh, I mean, like things got. I was like, hold on, hold on a minute. <laughs> and uh, but it, it. The great thing about it was, it didn't take long for him to adapt. It was so cool to watch him get used to that car and adapt to how what that car was doing. And he was watching the line of other people. You know that uh, the leader. Although he was checked out for a minute, he wasn't checked out forever. So you know, but it was uh, it was interesting watching all that transpire. And I was standing up there, and I said, "Okay, if he's leading with ten to go, we'll start kind of making our way that way." And Caitlin goes, "Let's go. He's got a five second lead. This isn't going to change." So <laughs> yeah. we we started uh, started our way down there. But it was it was a lot of fun. It was very cool. Yeah. Thanks. So right. let's have some fun here. Let's talk. I mean, you guys are brothers. I mean, clearly, Dad has set a bar. There's. It doesn't sound like there's too much messing around going on. I mean, it was hard work, and you guys had had goals. But you're still kids, and you're still brothers. There had to be some digging going on. You had to irritate each other once in a while, or you had to be pulling a prank <laughs> on each other once in a while. Give us some of the behind the scenes dirt, man. Yeah, I think I think I definitely lead the league in uh, in pranks and, and annoying the older brother. Uh, that's for sure. We were. Uh, we were actually sitting at the house last night telling some uh, some pretty good stories of growing up. Um, most of them were, I guess, from us sharing a room for 15 years. We uh, we had some some pretty good stories. I'll let Cody pick what his favorite one is. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know that I don't remember too many pranks and stuff, but but we would sibling argue, right? And and um, I mean, to to make it racing specific, the the very first year we ran two cars, we were both in a junior sprint in the year 2000. Like Tanner said, we weren't very good you know um the thing we were arguing over was who was better and we ran seventh and ninth it's like it didn't, it didn't, really, it didn't really matter you know like why, why are we arguing over that except we were 12 or 10 and, and um enough to where we almost quit mom was like enough i mean i mean i remember one night in the living room it was that was the end and um we finished that year and after that we didn't race against each other until we got into full-size sprint cars like because that was how competitive we were um at the time and and up to where um you know we would <laughs> we i guess we would argue or be fighting or squabbling uh even even going to bed at night and and um i remember there being a time that that we were arguing across the room and and my dad come in you know uh full stealth mode and and <laughs> open the door and like shimmied along the floor uh and we're arguing pretty soon he stands up in the middle of you know middle of the night middle of the dark and said are you guys done like loud and all of a sudden <laughs> like, oh. had no idea he yeah. was there no, no idea <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah busted That's sure. good. did you guys play any other sports you said you didn't start racing until you were 12 years old by then you're kind of figuring out other things to do <laughs> also yeah i mean um we, yeah. we both did um and and i remember my mom saying it, it, that we were going to be well-rounded if it killed her type thing because we were going from uh, one sports practice to another. Um, I think I went from a state championship soccer tournament to the opening practice day in probably 2004 or five when we were doing that. Um, so we never did play football. I, I know you probably can't believe that <laughs> with our big stature. Shocker. Um, yeah. You guys were yeah, sure exactly. could have been linemen. There's yeah, right uh, for sure. <laughs> but um, I mean, we played – football or uh, soccer and, and basketball and baseball and, and played all the sports uh, through school and, and coming up. Yeah, we, we did. I mean, we did everything that the full school experience, you know, mom made us go to every dance uh, mm -hmm. that there was. Um, 
we were all into it. We were looked in like FFA. Cody loved so you're that. Saying you yeah, guys yeah. can dance. <laughs> not dance. We tended. <laughs> you drank the punch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so so yeah, we we were in FFA growing up. You know, raised uh, hogs, uh, did it all. We she even made us get straight A's. Uh, wow. All now that school. that just took it to another so. level right <laughs> wow. there. Four point oh, grade point average, valid, valedictorian. I mean, you certainly did your job in school, right? Uh, that, yeah. that, like we talked, you know, from the very beginning, we were going to have have rules to start. One of them for dads was that we had to work on it, but one of mom's was that our grades couldn't go down, and she expected A's. So, um, Jeez, that, I would have never got the race. <laughs> That'd have been the end of that. I, I, was, uh, I was a pretty strong motivator. So, California yeah. State University graduate, President's Honor Scholar. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. sound, yeah. sounds like us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to go to the dean's room. I never got an award for it, but <laughs> All right. uh, we, we're fortunate to you know have 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 been able to have a, a full, well-rounded you know uh, education and experience as as I guess young adults and teenagers growing up. Um, and, and something I think you know a lot of that translates to to racing. Still, I mean, um, I, I think that that my and Tanner's experience as drivers can be very different than what um, maybe what some young professional drivers are, are being taught um, is, is that I view it as being part of a team, you know, and you're playing soccer and, and it, it doesn't matter if, you know, if, if um, you know, the, the forward got past your other defender, you're the last line, you, you better get there. I mean, you're all on a team, you win, you win together and you lose together and you all have to pick up the slack sometimes, even if it's not your spot. So. Yeah. And that's, that's an interesting thing. I mean, even, you know, even us hiring, you know, for, uh, you know, for our, any of our businesses, I look at that stuff. You look at team, you know, people that are involved in teams because you know what, they don't. They don't. Uh, they do rely on each other, but they also know how to work with each other to get to the ultimate goal, right? So, it's a it's a big deal. And you were talking about FFA. Of course, I want to talk about it. That's where he met his wife. So, I mean, this is an absolute great story. So, mm -hmm. but uh, elaborate. You got to tell the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, I, I remember. I was a sophomore in high school by the time I, I was able to have a market hog and to, to get into that part of the program. And, and Jordan was a freshman and she had one too. And we met at the, at the school farm. Uh, and that's the cutest uh, thing. It, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> And I wouldn't say cute. That made me get <laughs> yeah. uh, cool. I mean, just hogs. saying. I mean, you're showing a hog, Come and you on. see that girl over there showing her hog. That's, like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one girl. right there. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, I mean, so, so, I mean, at some point, we went, we went to high school together, and we didn't start dating. I don't think till till my senior year, but um, had been friends first. And and I mean, you, there's so much you can learn through FFA. Um, whether it's hogs or, I mean, even through, we, we had a lot of tractor work as part of the project and a lot of the judging teams you can get on, you can learn a lot of different things. And there's so much of that that applies to the real world and, and even to racing that um, people will overlook. So, and that's, and that is one thing about FFA. I mean, of course they have their national convention in Indy here. Um, they don't this year with, uh, that one thing that's going on anyhow, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, every year that they have that, I mean, it's just amazing. It, um, you know, the, the camaraderie and the, you know, the connection with all of them. And I don't think it matters what state you're from. I think everybody, you the know, hard work it. that's involved. It's what's taught. It's you know, unbelievable. Age. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and I mean, talk about market hogs. I mean, and not that it's exactly like racing, but I mean, there's, there's times when it's your turn to show and your class that you're up in, depending on what breed you had. I mean, everyone from the school is helping each other get ready. So whether it's, uh, you know, whatever is involved in preparation, when, when someone's up that's on your team, you're all pitching in to, to help ensure that, uh, that you do the best you can for your school and, and for your buddies. And so, I mean, a lot of that translates over. We're, um, we're all just trying to do our best, the best job that we can to, to help everybody be successful together. Well, you guys have beautiful children, and I'm <laughs> sure you get this question a lot, but are you going to let them race if they show interest in it? And if you do, are you going to bring them up how you work? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I, like, I like that Cody just looked yeah. right yeah, over yeah, yeah, exactly. Defer to the younger exactly. brother on this one. That's, I'm that's always what, interested uh, in that, that stuff. <laughs> That's what, uh, so, so far, mine and Allison's uh, discussions have been, uh, hey, nobody starts until they're at least eight. Um, I think, I think you got to get started in, in team sports and, and have a lot of growing up to do be, before you need to start getting in a race car. 
Um, and so I feel like that's one of the main rules. And, and the second rule is we're going to give them a golf club and a baseball bat first and see how those go. <laughs> okay. A lot more money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot yeah. less money to, to get them going, and they can make a lot more money. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of our rules at the what moment. What were you thinking, but, Stout? Yeah. <laughs> Robert could have had a basketball. Yeah. 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 I know. I, some guy said, said you know, golf is really expensive. I said, really? I said, you should have to buy a brand new set of clubs every single time you go out. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, no kidding. That's it. I mean, the, the nicest baseball bat you can get is still cheaper than a set of tires. I yeah, believe, that's right? that's exactly so, right. And and in our house, I mean, we've we've talked about it. and Trevor, my oldest, he's four and a half. He'll, he'll be five just after Christmas. So, um, the topic is coming up more and more regularly. But um, you know, I, I think you know our our spot is that I don't I don't want him to do it because I did it. And and I think that's the same way our dad was. You know mm-hmm. that he didn't he didn't want us to push anything you know on us that we didn't want to do. So. Um, if that discussion comes up, then, then it'll be a lot like what, what Tanner and I went through. That but that, be... that's how you're successful mm-hmm. because you know what? You did what you wanted to do. You took the path. You took the progression. And, I mean, as I said, you and I have known, uh, actually, all of you guys, you know, both of you have known each other a long time. Our paths came together. We separated and, you know, we came back. We came back around. But always, you know, always gentlemen, always the right thing. It was never, you know, I, I have, I, I, I probably could say this without, uh, without missing a beat that I have never heard either one of them say a coarse word about anyone, (laughs) you know, and, uh, I would like to try to do that yeah. Yeah. occasionally. It's not, not part of me. That's never happening. I've ruined all that. So <laughs> no I love the way your dad did it, actually. With you. I, I, my story wasn't the same with my son as, as his, but somewhere along the lines where, you know, he wanted to go to a go-kart track. He wanted to go, you know, take a look at some of that stuff. And, and I didn't do it on purpose. It was just, you know, busy doing this, busy doing that. And we had some ATVs, and we would go riding once in a while. But I, he pretty much had to wait for a year. He had been wanting to go to this go-kart shop here for a year, and we were going to go ATV riding, and it turned out being snowy, icy, sloppy, freezing cold. And, and we're in the truck and ready to go. And I said, are you sure you want to go out here and do this today? You know, because it's nasty. And <laughs> he said, well, could we go to that go-kart shop instead? I was like, yes, we can go today. <laughs> yeah. So we went over there, and he saw it. And, you know, he just absolutely loved it and wanted to go. And I ended up buying it for him um, for Christmas. This was probably around October. I bought it for him for Christmas and the beauty of living in Indiana, of course, is he got it for Christmas morning, and then he got to look at it for another three months <laughs> oh. before he could actually get in it and drive it, you know. But um, but it was making him wait, and, and again, not by design. It's just the way it worked out. But that desire inside of him to go racing was very high, whereas you're talking about making your kids wait a little bit. You know, a lot of times parents are excited. They want to see their kids get in a race car, and they'll stick them in one at five years old. And I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing by any stretch. It's not. It's just not for everybody. But it's so easy for those kids to get burnt out. I mean, we were at the racetrack. You know, even when he started at thirteen, we were at the racetrack every weekend. You know, all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you know, after a while, a, a young kid just is kind of over it. You know, I want. I want to do something else. And you start them really young. The burnout factor is so much higher. Well, and it, yeah, and, and I felt like it. At least one of the things that I took away was like you talked about it being our. You know, I guess our cross the bear. You know, burning. You know our passion it it helped i think parenting wise they use that leverage a lot oh i use it <laughs> against for sure. us you know and, and we saw kids that we raced against growing up that would miss a race and it was oh you know their grades weren't up or, or whatever for sure and it was just that was never you know we didn't want to let that happen you know we that was that was our priority really and and all the rest of things in our lives kind of followed that trickle down effect um yeah, and, and like like I said, when we helped helped other kids getting started before we even got into it, it was helping establish that that it, it wasn't going to be um, a program that we just started for for a fad for a year, you know. And it wasn't that there was this pressure that it had to go on, but that it was something that we were going to really want to do it and have to put the time in on it. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the kids we raced against that were were better than than us or finishing better than us, you know, they're. They had a had a team, and and Dad did the whole thing, and and his was that he wasn't gonna work on it any more than us. He was gonna match our effort. And so Taryn talked about that first year when we raced Friday nights, we'd wash on Thursday night and check it out and and load it back up and go again. And then he would race Saturday, and and that's how it would go. Um, and it wasn't until it was like, all right, hey, it's it's Monday, we're ready to unload, we're washing it. Dad wasn't gonna wash him. 
He did one time, I think. <laughs> and he quit. Yeah, probably. And anyway, uh, <laughs> dirt track. We were washing them, and then um, it's time to start helping get maintenance and ready on them. And it just kind of um, helped build that understanding that um, and sometimes things don't always go your way, and there's a lot of hard work involved. Uh, and if you want to um, to continue um, to be more consistent and get better, um, that it, that's uh, there's effort required. It's Put in the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Let's get the skinny on the bicycles off the roof into the pool. <laughs> it was not off the roof. <laughs> it wasn't off the roof. Well, Who was it? Somebody told us the off the roof yeah, thing. That I was thought it. it was Corey. No, it might have been someone snitching on you guys. So, so I remember the bicycles into the pool. Yeah, but it was off the diving board, and it was, yeah. And yeah. it was Tanner and Corey. Well, his story's way better yeah. off the oh, roof. I'd yeah. go with that one. Yeah, <laughs> we ended up with a motorcycle in the pool. So okay, here we that go. That was it's even it's better. Easy, yeah, it's easy uh, to fish the bikes the out. Yeah, you can fish <laughs> the bikes out no problem. But when you got a little dirt bike and you launch it off in there, and then the pool's full of oil and gas. That's a bit harder to <laughs> hide. Black marks down the side of it because the tires. Yeah, that probably wasn't our smartest choice. But I mean, we so, were out there in the rain, draining the pool and scrubbing it clean. Yeah, me, me and Corey. Uh, yeah, we we were always down for a good time, I guess. Um, so they, yeah, that, they were they were nine <laughs> when, we, when we was talking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, yeah, yeah. I, we definitely jumped uh, bikes in the pool and and rode them around and. Polar opposites, of course, because Corey is probably still the same and jumping bikes in the pools. And... <laughs> it's, it's cool to see him still going and the success he's had. You know, I talked about that junior sprint that first year. I bet there were 30 of us um, all that same age, and, and I bet there's probably six or eight left oh, there's... still racing. So uh, it, it's been really cool to follow um, as we went non-wing and, and maybe pavement racing that Corey has, has taken to the wings and had, had a whole bunch of success on the dirt. Yeah, and he had he had one guy that was was somewhat his uh, his mentor, and I can't remember who it is at this point. Uh, and I'll think about it. I think he runs the twenty six, or maybe I, I can't. Statler, Jason yeah, Statler, I think ran the double zero. The, yeah, that, double that was zero. What Corey's yep. number always was growing mm-hmm. up. So it's funny you talking about that. And I sent uh, Carl the picture that I sent to Ken yesterday. If you notice in there, it's Joseph Newgarden, Connor Daly. To the uh, all the way to the left of the picture there, that's Jimmy Simpson, and all of them in there have gone on to win championships. Much like you said, you know, I mean, we were out running running at Dismore's track uh, when these guys were were 13, 14 years old, and you know, going to Iowa this year, Connor scored his first pole in IndyCar, and he started on the front row next to New Garden, and I, I mean, I goosebumps talking about it, but I immediately w- went back to. Uh, 2004, you know, and seeing Connor and Joseph Newgarden front row at, at Dismore's track out there in Newcastle, you know, in junior can, you know, running with the kids. I was like, oh, my God, that's just phenomenal. It's you know, be and surreal. Yeah, it, it was just really, really cool. And my son's gone on to win three national championships, sports car, off-road racing. Needless to say, these two kids have done a fabulous job making it up to IndyCar. And, he, and got the, he got the Facebook Live deal that we did with Connor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was great because, of course, Ken had a lot of chemistry or, you know, a lot of uh, – <laughs> Of backstory with well, them. I mean, his his father Derek helped us out right away, I and mean, we were we were clueless. We didn't know what we were doing. We had Lee Beard. Lee Beard's son uh, was also very talented out there. Lee Beard, a um, a NHRA. award winning yep. NHRA crew chief, super talented, and he was cool. He helped us out. Derek helped us out. Um, you know, it was it was a pretty amazing group that was hanging around out there. You know, in IndyCar guys and their kids and stuff. You know, hanging around out there and. It is special whenever you guys are in that mix on the West Coast and, and you grow up with all of your buddies and to watch a certain number of you succeed the way you have, it's got to be so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. It, I mean, it's amazing how many of them from Plaza Park that we raced against that, that you still see at racetracks. You know, Chad Baseflug, Corey, uh, the Selzy brothers never necessarily raced against us. They were younger, but, you know, they pitted a couple spots away and the Facino brothers – uh, you know, raced against them and Jake Kagopian in, in uh, the micro ranks, you know, obviously has made a big name for himself. And, and so it's, it's just funny. Those, you know, those same stories we go back to, we played football in the pits with them, you know, yeah. when we had Turkey <laughs> night race, you know, back in 2000, just so, another race to you guys. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't night, care, you know? right. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's kind of, kind of fun to have those memories. How about you, Georgia? I'm loving it. I love all the. Well, you the were racing too. I mean, you know what? Way, the, <laughs> I was racing a little bit know, later you were, than that. You're talking about 2000. Well, I know later <laughs> than that, but <laughs> two you, years old. But the point older. is, you <laughs> lived, <laughs> you lived yeah. the same, the same yeah, scenario. Absolutely. Started. Uh, I started in horses, actually. So, kind of. 
don't he know, started in pigs. Yeah, you were horses. horses yeah. So <laughs> did that Goodness. for a while. And so when you talk about the mini sprint world or the, the go-kart world and stuff like that, that just brings back so many memories of just going to the track and all having so much fun. And then to now see, you know, like the Oliver Askews and those people <coughs> who have made it and, you know, other, especially other people that have gone different paths with their careers, whether they're doing reporting or crew chiefing or doing that, it's just so neat to um, go back to those memories and then fast forward today and see what they've done with their life. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same about you guys as well. Did you feel like it was more difficult? Did you have a little little tougher road as a girl? I don't know. I made a lot of friends. I, I feel like I'm a pretty sociable person. I never really took the whole girl thing into a, you know, I had a lot of people mention Danica and things like that, but never really. That had to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> it just never really felt any different to me. I figured when you put the helmet on and you're going out there, you want to be just as good as anyone else. And if they say, well, you're not going to be because you're a girl, then. That's not a valid. That's not a valid outcome right, on right. anything, yeah. anyway. No, so. I'm really glad to hear that answer. I mean, because it sounds to me like you, it really that it presence not, really wasn't on you. That's it great. did not have really any effect on me whatsoever. And you can even go through that as motorsports in a whole, not just the driver. You always get the someone looking down your back, trying to see if you're going to make a mistake or something. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. I've said stupid stuff to. Cody and Tanner both on, <laughs> on the microphone before, but it's all a learning process. And I think as any driver, any reporter, any crew chief, any engineer, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to build and grow on them. So I think that's what everyone's trying to do, especially in this stage of their life specifically. So yeah, it didn't really have any effect on me. That's I, great. I love it. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's the future hold for you guys down there? Uh, I, I hop on an airplane tomorrow morning and uh, go back Thursday morning to my banking job at home <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try to catch up on a week's worth of emails, pretty much. And What uh, do people at the bank say? Are they, are they all asking? Are they all curious? Are they all watching? Do they know? Yeah, I, uh, do they know? Uh, <laughs> they, they know. I, uh, I keep it pretty quiet, but uh, a lot of customers that I have uh, you know, know me from, from growing up racing there and, and have sent me text messages over the last couple of days. They've seen things on Facebook. And uh, even got asked by my boss why I even work there. <laughs> well, <I'm not laughs> just in race cars all the time. So, um, you know, but I, I love my job. I've enjoyed it. Um, that was something, you know, 2000, I guess, 13 it was. Cody and I kind of had a, a rough off season and um, kind of lit a fire under Cody. Uh, and we've seen the success he's had since. And, and for me, it really made me uh, not want to make a profession out of racing, at least at the time. So, uh, you know, went home, got a job. I work in the ag industry as a loan officer uh, for Golden State Farm Credit and uh, and enjoy that for, you know, 11 and a half months out of the year. And then uh, I'm on an exercise bike the rest of the time trying to well, that's, get ready to be him. <laughs> well, not the rest of the time. Yeah, that's like three weeks ahead of time. Yeah, is what, is what I was told. So, uh, yeah. But that's super cool to hear. That, so there's not a jealous bone in your body that he's – not that he's had his success, but that you haven't been able to follow that path. Yeah, no, no. You know, um, that, that was a decision that, you know, I prayed about and, and at the time made the decision. And, um, you know, I, I, for whatever reason, try to live my life without uh, looking back. Because if you're looking back, it, the only choice is regret, right? You know, you could always only look back and think of what if I would have done something different. So, um, you know, it's the life that, that God set forward for me. And, uh, you know, I've loved it. I have a great family, a great wife, um, and, uh, and get to enjoy being home with them. So, um, you know, it's, it's fun and, and we've enjoyed watching the success that Cody's had and, uh, and being able to cheer him on and have had no part in it at all. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to watch that I'm just as big of a fan as anybody else is, you know. Well, you certainly understand it, and, and that has to be a great connection w with your brother, you know, so that's that's very special. Cody, how about you, man? I mean, the, the future is bright for sure, and it's great to see you have that, that run there in a different style car, and uh, I believe I read in there that you've had, you've had aspirations of driving an Indy car, and maybe that's the first step. Yeah, I mean, um, Tanner talked to, you know, about when I guess our, you know, our, our paths were were one and the same for a long time and then and then they kind of split and and it was that that winter of 2013 and 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 he was just getting ready to graduate college and and finishing his internship uh with uh with what's now golden state farm credit and decided to to make a career path with it and um i remember being at home and and had been on the phone with every silver crown owner that ever there was and got nothing but no and um, Jordan and I had been married two years, and, and we had spent that winter in California trying to regroup and um, got in the truck and, and 
headed for Indianapolis, and the only ride I had was uh, a hand-me-down I got off a of Tanner when <laughs> when he decided he was going to stay home in, in a dirt sprint car. So um, you know, on that trip back was was a leap of faith. It was something that you know that we had continued to pray about. You know, and and whatever the path was, I, I wasn't ready to to stop there. Um, and and if it and if it was one you know, one year and, and that was it, then at least I knew I, I put every last uh, effort into it. And before that trip, you know, was over, I think we were in the middle of Texas and got, uh, you know, on, on my second round of calls after everyone had told me no once, I was going to make them do it again and um, got connected with Tony De Palma and that, well, how soon can you be there? I'm like, well, GPS says I'm going to be in Ohio by tomorrow <laughs> afternoon and I'll be there an hour after that, you know, and um, which is a great story, by the way, the leap of faith. You can, I mean, oh, trust sure. me, I'm, yeah. I'm very well aware of how those work. And, uh, and sometimes you feel like you leaped off a cliff, but, uh, it, it's, you got to trust the path. And, and you told me the story of how it went and yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, super fortunate. Um, not only, you know, to, to have, have that faith and, and to, to believe in the path that God set out for us, but to have my wife Jordan alongside every step of the way. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, you know, that, that no matter what uh, life was going to throw at us, we could do it together. And so that was, um, you know, really something that's been been great, you know, and, and that kind of led us to to restart in the Silver Crown series with with the De Palma family. And, you know, if you talk about anyone being jealous, I'm I'm more jealous of the path Tanner took sometimes when I find out, you know, he's I, I call I'll call him when I'm on my way home from the race shop at one in the morning here and it's 10 o'clock there and he's not having to work still and I, man he was lots <laughs> lots smarter than me you know he's, he's, he's uh, a bad he's yeah, yeah, he is. And, uh, what are you doing dude it's 10 o'clock yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i'm late i'm gonna be late again tomorrow and, um, but, but i had to work till 5 30 today okay <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. the commute exactly. was horrible on the way home uh, but um so it's it's been really neat to 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 see us both have success in, in the in the path that we were led on and and you know for for me and you know I know there's there's no doubt in my mind if, if he wanted to still do it he could and it, and if there was doubt in anyone else's mind wait five laps into Raceway Park and he'll remind them too that <laughs> yeah. he could still do it no doubt so uh, it's it's been uh, been a lot of fun uh, these past few years not only as we've grown through uh, careers but but our families and uh, and the time we get to spend together has really uh, really been special. You're so well established now. Um, have you have you already secured a ride for 2021 or what's what's the thoughts there? Um, shoot, and, and I sorry I totally forgot the question <laughs> by the time I started rambling there. But but as far as our, our future and the plans and going forward and um, where I was headed with the the big wind up there was. Um, at some point along the way, I felt like I, I had done a lot to prove that I was was worth going to the next level and just couldn't quite break through. And, and there were guys that were breaking through that um, are very talented, but I, I didn't feel like they were quite as comfortable on the pavement as I was. And for, for a minute, it, it made me bitter, you know, where um, you hate to – not that I wasn't happy for them, but I just hated that I felt like I was stuck. And um, finally got to a spot um, and and kind of had – had a piece about it and, and something I had to, had to pray about a lot was, um, that, that I, I'm super grateful to have had the opportunities I've had. And, and, and I finally had to get to that point where, um, I was trying so hard to make it to the next level that I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. And, and I was, um, you want to talk about the, the clay Klepper days, right? So Tanner and I were, um, at, at grandma's house in the barn and we would sneak in after dinner to try to watch Thursday night thunder because Thursday night was pit night. And we talked about at that point, we were kids, you know, that if we could just make it there, you know, how, how cool that would be. And here I was, I was there and, and I, and I was still bitter about not being somewhere different. And I decided I, I need to change my attitude about that and, and enjoy where we were. And at the same time, you know, I've had so many great opportunities to meet great people through racing, um, that, that I've just kind of taken one year at a time and, and one opportunity at a time and, um, whatever race is next to prepare the best I could for that. And so, uh, as far as, you know, 2020 to, or 2021, I'm going to kind of back up to, to 2020 was that, um, you know, I really wanted to help Nolan racing win a silver crown title, but for, for me personally, um, you know, I, I always enjoy running those races and enjoy running with that team, but, but I didn't necessarily have a silver crown championship as a real personal goal for me this year. Uh, I always want to do the best job I can for whoever I'm driving for, but one of my goals was to try to get into new things and, and fortunate this year with, uh, with Rico's help and, and a lot of, a lot of people that come alongside us to, uh, try to get into those new things. Um, I, I don't really know what 
2021 holds. Uh, and I've been a one, one day at a time kind of guy. We've been overly blessed with this year with us in, in business and a lot of other ways with my daughter's health and some things coming along. And, and, uh, one of the, you know, one of the things was I called Cody and, you know, Jeff Matthews and I had been talking about this, Tony Stewart and I had been talking about it, Cindy Elliott with, you know, Elliott's, uh, custom trailer sales and carts <laughs> get that right she'll murder me <laughs> but anyhow you know we're talking about cody cody let's give him a chance let's find a way let's get him a chance in this thing you know and uh and at the end of the day i called him up and i said listen this is what i this is what we want to do and i've got you so i'm your backstop if you can put together whatever you can put together i'll put the rest of it together and, you know, I'll do it. So, really, we kind of had a whole Indy Lights Freedom 100 thing in mind. And uh, that pretty well got shut down. Uh, <laughs> with the rest of the season. With the Fine. rest of everything else. And uh, But, you know, one of the things that uh, Stuart kept talking about was we need to get him rear engine experience. He goes, that was the biggest thing with me coming from the Sprint Midget Silver Crown was the rear engine, the downforce, you know, just the whole different I think you figured that out this last weekend, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and so it was, it was really interesting how it all transpired. But one of the things that I, that I absolutely admire with both of these guys, but definitely with Cody, with this situation was, you know, if I got a little bit to think about it, because of course I just plow him in, you want to go do this? We're going to do it. Let's do this. Uh, well, uh, you know, okay, can deal. I, can, it, no, no. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to pray about this tonight. I'm going to talk to Jordan and I'll get back to you. I'm like, okay. Because I, I, and I admire that because you know what? I mean, just exactly what he said. Most people were like, yeah, when, you know, know, so, and, and so it, it was cool and it was very methodical in the way that you thought it through and wanted to do it. And, and uh, I was glad you came back and said yes because I was like, man, I really have worked my ass off to try to make this come together. <laughs> yeah. Here, so. yeah. I thought it was real words of wisdom that you had over there, showing really showing a lot of maturity um, and saying that I just need to enjoy where I'm at. And I got caught up, you know, racing with my son. He started when he was 13 years old, and and we went. I mean, we're still going as hard as we know how to go hard, but for 12 years we chased that next level. You know, I mean, you just it's just endless you know you're relentless you're on the phone calling sponsors you're looking for rides you're anything anywhere any way you can get it done and it's your entire life it consumes your life and he was probably 25 26 um as i'd say just a couple of years ago and and the light bulb finally went off for me and i you know i mean you know, I've been in the sport for a while, so I said, I said, listen, man, here's the reality of it. And he knew. I said, the reality of it is, I said, the window's closing. I mean, we're definitely on, on the far side of, of you getting, you know, a, a pro ride. Certainly NASCAR, any development driver, all those, all those mm-hmm. deals are done. You know, unless you find the lucky sugar daddy, it's, it's not happening. So, uh, and he gets it. I said, listen, I said, we've been really fortunate. We've been in the game for 12 years. We've never stopped. You've won at the time a couple of national championships. I, you know, it's. I said at some point you have to just stop and look where we're at and enjoy the ride. We've got to enjoy the ride. We might not ever get to what our ultimate goal was. It doesn't mean you ever stop trying, but we've got to enjoy the ride because it's pretty cool what we've been able to do. You know, as a as a father and a son, but just to stay in the game is quite an accomplishment. So. Hats off to you for having the maturity to figure that out. And, and now it does. It looks like some doors are opening. You just never know, right? You, you, you know, if you quit, you know the answer. You know, and, and, and if, you're, if you're quitting because your goals or direction is in a different, different direction, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because it'll wear somebody down. And, and maybe your life just isn't good, you know, doing what you're doing and chasing it. But, you know, if you can stay in the game, you just never know. Yeah, for sure, and 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 like I said, we never did stop working at, at trying to get to the next level, and and to keep those goals in mind and, and work towards that. But um, I, I didn't want it to be where I was bitter about what I was doing right. and having the opportunity to do. And and there was you know been some moments along the way. You know, um, uh, one of the first things that was really driving me is I, I did want to win the Silver Crown Championship really bad um, because I thought I could have won it. You know, when I was younger and just had 
you know, things happen like they do in racing in life and wanted to, wanted to establish that and, and prove that. And, um, you know, after the first one and, and racing with great people and, and enjoying, enjoying those moments with, with people and seeing, you know, some of the neatest things, you know, about, about for, for me, you know, um, about racing. I mean, obviously we do it for comp, you're comp competitive, right. For the competition of it and you want to win. Um, but some of the neatest moments have been to get out and to see the joy on, the team's faces, the car owner's faces, and to, to give somebody their first win and, and to be part of that. I mean, that, um, that makes it, makes oh, it that yeah. much more special. And I mean, there've been moments where I considered, you know, through, throughout my career, maybe the end of 2016, you know, do, do I really want to be doing this this way? You know, have, have I, you know, enjoyed this level to where that's it. And, um, you know, had a, had a one-off, it's the last race of the year and not really sure. And, um, drove for Brad and Tara Armstrong at, uh, at Anderson. And it was, it was the, the Tony Elliott classic. We, we had just, just lost him, um, that earlier that year, I think, or, or maybe the year before, but the first race they were having for him. And, and I remember, uh, the moment that we shared in, in victory lane, I thought, man, how, how cool it was, um, to, to be part of that with them and how much that meant to them and meant to m- to me to be part of that, that, um, that, that was something that they kept me going for, for a little while and into the next, uh, next level to try to try to do that with people. And so fortunate to have, have stayed in the game long enough, um, to, to get the chance that we've had, had so far. And, and I don't know, you know, there's no telling what the next day holds, um, and, and what anything will come, but, uh, I'm thankful to have made it this far and to have enjoyed the opportunities I have. Tanner, I'm going to work you back in here. We were actually teammates, or you and my son were teammates. Yep. I think it was 2015, maybe? Sometime around there. Right around there. Yep. So it was his first ever Silver Crown race. I think he qualified fourth and finished fourth, which we were we were super happy with. And I yeah. think it was your boyfriend that, that got in front of him. <laughs> I think a number, of, a number of the guys told him, you know, because he had practiced his first day practicing, and and they, you know, had a light load of fuel in it. And then everybody told him, like, you got to be careful. Like, this thing's going to be different when you get a load of fuel in it. So he checked up going into turn one, and everybody went, whoa, right by. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to go a little faster. You know, so, and then he tried, you know, the rest of the race trying to make it up. And you guys you guys were gone out there. I think Coons hit the wall. And he had brake failure or something. He hit the wall that night. But, uh, but I, I, I bring that up because there's no bigger – fan of yours than Mike Bowman yeah. <laughs> and, and Mike Bowman and I, you know, chatting and it was Mike that put, that put Robert in the car that night. And, um, and, you know, he would constantly say to me, like, you know, you're going to go broke chasing this dream. It, you know, it, it's, you, it's almost impossible to get there unless you have a lot of money. And that's kind of what you're talking about, you know, as well, Cody. I mean, you've, you, the success, success is there. The talent is there. There's absolutely no question about it. You beat the best there there possibly is out there. But to get to the next level means you've got to reach in your pocket and somebody's got to write a big fat check, you know, and, and that's the way it goes. And I, I remember Mike telling me, he said, man, I've called all the right people. I've done everything I can do to try and get Tanner in a ride. He said, I can't make it happen. And it's, it's just a very difficult thing. And, I, and I'm with you. I mean, we were bitter watching guys go up, make it up to the next level. It's like, man, how does he get that ride whenever you beat him last year and that, 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 you know, and you do, you, you get better. And it's the competitive side of us as well, you know, that, that we want to win. And uh, it's, it's a very difficult thing and it's very easy to, to consume your life. So again, hats off to you for, for keeping that in check. And uh, like I said, say to you, Tanner, I mean, no, no bigger fan of yours than, than Mike Bowman. If he could put you in a cup card tomorrow, <laughs> he, I think he would do it. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's a, I, I love Mike. Um, you know, you talk about racing with people and getting their first wins. That was what, uh, yeah, Mike, they hadn't won a silver crown race yet when I started running for them and, and they were, uh, you know, getting close to retiring Brent, you know, Elmore, the crew chief for yeah. a long time had, had some health problems and, and was ready to kind of hang it up. And it was the, it was like the July race, I think of 2012 or 13. And, uh, I was on the airplane and it was raining and we had lightning strikes and I was stuck at the Indianapolis airport and couldn't get off the plane. And, uh, we were going to miss practice cause I wasn't going to make it there in time. And, and thankfully they rained the thing out. And so Mike, uh, I talked him into it over the winter and said, well, just don't hang it up yet. Just give me one chance. You know, and uh, and that was what Jason McCord told me. If you can win them one, 
it'll be his favorite driver forever. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and by God, that first night we got lucky enough to win one, and uh, and we've had the you know the success. Well, he had good stuff. Since. I mean, I think he had a motor from I think he had a motor from Tony, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. I think he had done his homework with Keith Coon. Said. Helped him out with the shock package. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, Larson actually had driven it. Uh, you know, I was supposed to race in in uh, that July, and I think the July before Larson uh, ran in it. And I don't remember if if Cody ended up winning that night or something. And Larson ran fourth, and I ran fifth. I remember following him and thinking, man, that thing doesn't look too bad. <laughs> I'd like a shot in it. And uh, and yeah, I got got a chance. And uh, and yeah, we've you know had fun racing for the better part of a decade now. It seems like uh, together. So were you driving for him? Was it was it Toledo maybe? And you went for a big ride? Yeah. Was it yep. a lapper? I, uh, was it a lapper or something? Did something stupid it, in the straightaway? It was a lapper. Uh, C J Leary. I'll never oh, forget it. Called uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> I got the video. It was a good one. Uh, that was yeah. back. In the, that I was, heard it was a pretty good one. Yeah. That was back in the day with CJ when he was just sorting it out. No, so. I, uh, I don't know if it was CJ as much as it was CJ Spotter, whoever it was that night. Uh, you know. That would probably have been Chuck. Larry. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, we, we were, we were trying our best. Uh, you know, you can't uh, can't lay it, lay off one when you got Cody on the track and. He had stuck me on the start and was leading the thing, and, and we caught CJ and Tracy Hines, and, and we're trying to lap them. And I got Cody to pick a lane, and, and I went to the outside, and Tracy kind of rolled through, and I was coming through, and CJ obviously didn't know I was there and, and uh, took a pretty good ride. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, uh, we polished off that race car and, and got out the two Well, I remember Mike, Mike was upset. He's like, that's the best car I ever owned. Like I, where he said, I flew somewhere, maybe Arizona or something. It was like like a unique car, year, whatever it was. He said, I wanted that car. He said, and that one's junk. It's gone. Yeah, that's what they, they always told me, that uh, that the two car was terrible and it wasn't as good and it was bad. and It's the worst thing, you know, we'd ever seen. And, and I think two weeks later we unloaded it and it was that first Carb Night Classic and we lapped the whole field except for Cody and the thing. So, uh, yeah, it's horrible. horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. And, and that's the way Mike is. And I uh, guarantee you to this day, if you ask him, he would say, that other car was better. <laughs> it was still better. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I, 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 I'll never forget. We came back the next May to run and uh, went up to the shop to try to get my feet or, you know, my seat kind of adjusted in the two car. And the 11 was still sitting there, motor hanging out of it, oil puddles still underneath <laughs> it. And, uh, and, yeah, it was, uh, you know, he, he didn't want to give he that thing up. didn't want to give it away. No. So, Great know. stuff. Hey, man, we appreciate you guys taking the time. We've had you in here for a little bit. So we appreciate you taking the time and coming, back, coming by here. And congrats on all your success. It's, it's super cool, man. And, and two stand-up classy guys, man. Awesome. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it very much. Thanks for letting us come in and uh, chat for a bit. Thanks for watching this episode of The Skinny. Be sure to check out all the latest sun and optical eyewear at fatheads.com. Special thanks to our sponsorship partners at Elliott's Custom Trailers and Carts. This has been a production of Fathead Studios. Please remember to subscribe. <laughs>